Um, so that's super fun. I'm hoping that everybody loves calculus. Um, yeah. Anyway. Um, calculus is just one of those things that you love it or you hate it. There's no in between. Um, okay. So this is from the 2021 um, HSE. So this is after they did the new syllabus for maths. So it's question 24. I'd probably say this is um, a three difficulty. Um, so we've got the curve y equals 3 over x minus 1 intersects the line y equals 3 and 2 times x at the point 2 and 3. Okay, and they give that to us. The region bounded by the curve y equals 3 over x, um, 3 over x minus 1, the line y equals 3 on 2x, the x-axis, and the line y equals 4 are shaded in the diagram. Find the exact area of the shaded region. Now, this sort of question, um, I guess they were nice to you in the fact that they give you the diagram um, here. I would say biggest tip if they don't give you the diagram, the first thing you, the very, very first thing you want to be doing is drawing that diagram yourself, right? Because otherwise it's super hard to understand what they're actually trying to get you to look at, okay? And if you can't see this diagram, um, so if they didn't give it to you, you wouldn't be able to see that because this line is exactly perfectly straight, we can then do a little triangle here, okay? Because if we've got all these different lines, we can't integrate all of them to find um, our exact area under the curve. So we need to find some way to split it up so that we can do some integration, some finding of the area, right? Because if I gave you all of this, I don't think anybody here would know how to just integrate all of that to find our exact area, right? So if we can make a triangle, everybody knows how to find the area of a triangle. So that's something super um, easy that we can do to then find some of the area, right? Because we are finding exact area. Okay, so to find this area of the triangle, area equals half times base times height. So we know that our base is going to be two because our x coordinate here is two. So we know we're going to be two in. So we're going to get half times two. And then our y coordinate is three. So we know we're going to be three units up times three. So we're going to get m two times three on two, which is six on two, which is three. Okay. And then that's here. Alrighty, for this next bit, I'm just gonna do it down here because um, we're gonna need a little bit more room. But this is when we can then start to do our integration because we're only thinking about, let me just draw it, two lines, right? We can integrate for our area when we are only thinking about two lines, okay? So I'm actually gonna make this blue so it makes a little bit more sense. Um, so then we're thinking about, we've got between four here and two here. So we're gonna be integrating between four and two. And we're integrating to find the area between four and two of just this function, right? Some people get a little bit confused, I think, about um, knowing which formula they're doing, um, or which function they're looking at if they have to like minus them or add them together. But in this situation, this line here, this x equals four, the only thing it's doing is creating a boundary, right? Because there's no area between that line and the x-axis because it exists um, vertically, right? So they're only looking at the area under this curve here, okay? And then what we wanna do is just integrate that using um, the um, formula sheet. Um, when we've got, um, um, what do you call it? A fraction like this. So then we're going to be thinking about, we're going to get, um, three, um, ln x minus one and four and two. Um, because what we want to do is then take this out 
Um, so to get from here to here to here, sorry, I probably should have done that a little bit better. Um, then we do one on x minus one. So we've got, so this is going to equal f dash x over f of x, right? So in order to do that, we need to do, place that three on the outside so we're not actually changing the function itself. Okay. Um, and then we're going to integrate that and we're going to get, um, actually, we know what we're going to do then to find the exact area is when we're combining these two things together, right? Because those give us the two halves, well, not exactly half, but the two um, areas that we're trying to find. So then the area is going to equal to three plus three ln, whoops, I forgot the L, x minus one. Um, it's a bit harsher between four and two. Um, and then when we look at that, we are going to get three plus three ln three. And again, we're finding area, so units squared. Okay, I'm just going to give everybody like just a second just to. Absorb all, absorb all of that. Okay. So yeah, I'd say that's a pretty difficult question. Um, I would say that most of you are probably pretty confident with doing the maths itself, like doing this finding the area and then, you know, integrating. Um, just the hardest part is understanding what we actually are trying to find the area of and what we need to integrate. Okay, so don't be afraid to take some time when you're starting a question to actually be thinking about um, what am I actually going to be doing here? Okay, like it's okay to take a second just to think about what am I actually finding the area of, right? Okay, so this is also from the 2021 um, HSE. Um, I'd say this is probably a two um, on my scale of difficulty. Um, so I'm just gonna give you all a second to read that question. So we are solving optimization problems for any of the functions covered in the scope of the syllabus in a wide variety of contexts, including displacement, velocity, acceleration, Area of volume, business, finance, and growth and decay. So they've just pretty much listed it off every possible possibility of a question type you can look at. Okay. So super common um, way that this does come up is in terms of particles. Um, so you think about a particle is shot vertically upwards from a point 100 meters above ground level. The position of the particle y meters above the ground after t seconds is given by yt equals minus 5t plus 70t plus 100. Now, I think um, optimization is one of those things that um, you never really know what to expect. Um, and I wouldn't say that's particularly true. I think there are patterns to your optimization questions. Um, so it's just super important to do a lot of practice with these sorts of questions so you know um, the sort of thing that might come up. Um, so if we're looking at part A, find the maximum height um, above ground level reached by the particle. Key giveaway here is when it says maximum height that we are going to be differentiating for, to find, in this case, y dash. So if we've got yt is equal to minus 5t squared plus 70t plus 100, we're just going to quickly differentiate for y dash, which is going to give us 2 times minus 5 is minus 10 plus 70. So it's a pretty simple differentiation. So you'd probably get one mark for doing the differentiation um, correctly. And then all we need to do is um, max height is when um, y dash t is equal to zero. Okay, so then we're gonna get minus 10t plus 7t is equal to zero, so minus 10t is equal to minus 70. So then t is equal to minus 70 over minus 10, which is equal to seven, okay? And then we need to find yt when t is equal to seven. There's some people um, 
is really common for some people to forget that there is one more step in this process. Okay, so we found the value of T for which we're going to get the maximum height. But in order to find that height, we need to find YT. Okay, so we're going to find Y when T is equal to 7. So Y of 7. So that's going to give us minus 5 times 7 squared plus 7. 70 times 7 plus 100, which is going to give us... I'm just going to use a calculator quickly to do this. Um, if everybody wants to give this a go on their calculator too, they can. Okay, which is going to give us 345 meters is the max height. Okay, so that's a pretty stock standard question, um, optimization sort of question. So you do want to get super familiar with finding maximums and minimums um, in all sorts of um, contexts. Um, so then we've got part B. Oh, I didn't leave enough space to do part B. Okay, we're just going to quickly rub this out and then we'll do part B in there as well. Okay, so with part B, it's worth three marks. So you do want to be familiar with how to do these questions because you don't want to be losing three marks in your paper. Um, and there's usually at least one question on optimization in your paper. So it's super important to get familiar with them. Um, okay, so find the velocity of the particle in meters per second immediately before it hits the ground, leaving your answer in the form A, is times the square root of b where a and b are integers so it's this question automatically they're giving you what they want their answer in and velocity is our key giveaway that we want to be finding we're still going to be using um our y dash okay so to find when the particle hits the ground we want to find when yt is equal to zero right because if yt is our height if we have no height, if it's equal to zero, um, then we have nothing. It's going to be on the ground. Um, sorry, that was a long way to go about saying that. But anyway, so we're trying to solve for minus 5t plus 70t plus 100 is equal to zero. Okay, first thing we want to do here is simplify. So um, we can simplify by um, dividing by 5. Um, actually, we'll divide by negative 5 to get rid of that negative up the front. So if, obviously, if we divide this one by negative 5, we're going to get just the t squared. Um, 70 divided by minus 5 is minus 14. And then um, we're going to get negative 20. Um, so with this, the key indicator here that we're going to be using the quadratic formula is that they've given us this with a square root. And what um, way of solving a quadratic is going to give us a square root? The quadratic formula. Okay. So then we, if we solve for that, we're going to get 14 plus or minus the square root of um, b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a, which is going to give us 14 plus or minus. Just going to quickly work that out. If everyone wants to give this a go on their calculator as well. Okay, which is going to give us square root of 196 plus 80 on 2, which is equal to 14. Actually, we can simplify that if we do this division here, we'll get 7 plus or minus the square root of 69. Okay, so then we've got to think about this. This is a super common um, thing that people forget to think about when they're doing these sorts of questions, is that we are looking at time. So our time won't be negative. So therefore, that t is only going to be 7 plus the square root of 69 because we're not interested in the negative, um, because we're not going to have negative time. Um, okay, 
Then what we want to do is um, find when we've got y dash of um, 7 plus 6 at uh, the square root of 69 so that we can get um, our a and our b um, so that we're looking at velocity, right? Because if we're looking at velocity, that's why we want to be thinking about y dash. Um, and then we've got the t that we need to put into that. So if um, I remember we said y dash of t was equal to negative 10t plus um, 70. So if we've got y dash of 7 plus root 69, we're getting negative 10, 7 plus root 69 plus 70, which is going to give us negative 70 um, minus 10 root 69 plus 70. So we can cancel those out and we're going to end up with negative 10 to the square root of 69. Okay, and they've said us, told us that they want um, our solution in this format. We can look at our solution. We're in that format where A is equal to negative 10 and B is equal to 69. Alrighty, so that's that. Um, and that's like a super, super common calculus question. So they're not too difficult if you know what you're um, sort of looking for. So you don't want to get super.